Right, welcome to the Vision Success Digital Marketing Workshop. Um, these are regular workshops that are designed to help you take your vision and realize it into a successful business. The overall structure of the next hour will be a uh, short introduction as to who we are and what Vision Success is all about. Um, and then we've got uh, an educational presentation by Michael Luff today, which uh, I'm really looking forward to. I've seen quite a few uh, presentations by Michael and I know it will be really useful and will take away lots of useful uh, uh, take, uh, points uh, to work on in your business. Uh, there will be a chance to ask, ask questions uh, at the end and please feel free to drop questions into chat or if you're on LinkedIn or um, uh, Facebook or YouTube, just use the normal comments through there and that will come through. Uh, we use a product called uh, Restream and uh, Rachel will be posting those into chat so that we can we can ask those. Uh, and then we've got an open floor on any questions on marketing or business in general. Um, if anybody's got any burning questions that, that they want to answer and then we'll finish by uh, 12 o'clock. Um, so, um, yep. Just go back to the slide deck. So um, probably quite a lot of you know me already. So I've been a business coach and digital coach for uh, over 20 years now. We run a digital agency as well. So we provide coaching and uh, agency support. I've worked with over 500 companies and uh, I've been using technology since 1984. It's a quick run through, a bit of housekeeping. Please run in speaker view during the presentation and then gallery view during the interactive sessions. Um, if you want to uh, join us, then uh, Rachel can put the link into, um, uh, in, in, into the comments. Um, you're free to join us uh, during into the Zoom session if you're uh, on the LinkedIn, YouTube or Facebook. Um, please ask questions through chat and, uh, and well, at the end, if you can keep your video on, that's useful because then we know who to ask questions and, and uh, so forth. Um, so why do we do this? There's quite a lot of work. We've got quite a lot of technology involved and so forth, restreaming and, and using various platforms and so forth. Well, we want you uh, to help you guys compete in a digital world. And uh, we want to, to help you build on your knowledge. Because that means we can then do the more complex stuff and you can do, you can do a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff in-house. We're here to help you solve your digital marketing problems. And services. So what, what is the uh, what is vision success? Well we've got the free Monday Wednesday workshops uh, running fortnightly. We'll stop for part for August and early September for people go, going on holiday. We have got a book which is 60,000 words which we'll describe in a minute. Got a couple of we're, we're building a, a library of online uh, digital marketing courses. Uh, so that uh, you can look at this stuff in your own time. Uh, you can always, these, these sessions are always recorded and uh, we're building up quite a library of uh, all the different presentations we've been running to date. Um, we've got a digital marketing and strategy implementation app, uh, which is in soft launch at the moment. So we've got quite a few people using it. And I'm actually currently developing a training course so that it brings together a lot of the things that we've discussed over the last few months and, uh, and, uh, and then how to impl uh, implement that in the app. And then we also do coaching through and uh, impl consultancy through market marketing strategy development and implementation planning for those who prefer to have somebody do it for them. This is the book. Uh, if you go into uh, Amazon and type in Drive Sales or Digital Marketing, we should be up position three or four, um, uh, and it's uh, $14.99. Uh, so hopefully good value at 60,000 words. It's up to date. It was launched just before Christmas, and no doubt uh, later on in the year we'll be updating it again. Just currently in uh, digital format at the moment. Uh, we also have... Um, we developed this website and we work with a company called Net, NetHub who develop an app. Um, so it's a cross between a CRM and, uh, uh, and uh, LinkedIn, but it basically takes away all the clutter and it allows you to manage your network. It's completely free. 
you can set up your own groups as well. Uh, and if you'd like to join the Vision to Success group, if you go to um, Vision to Success, go to our main menu, click on services, then you'll see Vision to Success community. And it'll take you through to there and, and how you can then uh, join us uh, online. Uh, we'll be expanding this uh, during the autumn as we on, as we get more users of the of the app. And it's there for support and any marketing questions, etc. So I'm really pleased to um, introduce you to uh, Michael Luff. Um, uh, as we approach a, a tightening economy, we need to look at our businesses uh, to find out uh, how we can deliver more with less. It, I mean, you can see it with the rail strike. Um, the uh, Yes, they say it's all about pay and conditions and so forth and job losses. Well, basically, the rail network, because of COVID, has lost a third of its um, of its income. So, you know, like any business, they've got to make changes. And um, but the, what the thing that sort of kind of not really talked about is all the technological changes. Is and, and the railways are really trying to work smarter, not harder. I use the railways, and I use the app. I don't I don't print anything. I just go onto the app, and within minutes, I've got it. When I show it the guard, it all works. Go through works you know and, and that saves money time the environment etc so you know and, and every industry is going to have to go through this battle how do how can we work smarter not harder so uh, the goal next year is so uh, i'm delighted today i'm delighted to be joined by my guest speaker michael love managing director of blue wren who i've known for many years and michael's going to give us some hopefully some good tips on how we can use process uh, rather than cutting costs. So I'll stop sharing, Michael, if you want to uh, grab the screen. Thanks very much. Thank you, Peter. That's excellent. And share the screen. Okay, is that visible? Yep, that looks yeah. good. Yeah. That looks good. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, and hello, everyone. Thank you for giving up your time on a beautiful day. I hope it's sunny where you are. Um, but I just, yeah, so Peter has, has given me a great introduction. Um, and I want to focus today's little workshop and session on process. So there's plenty of, of information, uh, particularly around uh, the sales uh, activity that you can do and marketing activity. That's where that Peter and his team are the experts. Um, but quite often, businesses overlooked the, the process of going about it because Without process, um, you then um, create some real issues in the business. Uh, those issues can include just cost. You're putting cost on without necessarily getting the return. The purpose of process is to make something that is repeatable and that is scalable. And that is what I'm here to try and explain uh, and particularly give some real life examples and about how we went about it in our business and how um, how everyone, how uh, how it has worked for our business as well. So, I'll just sorry. There we go. So a little bit, a very very quick intro of me. Here I am, uh, business owner, managing director of business. Um, we specialise in productivity and process improvement. We start at the point of process. Yes, we build software, but that is not the point. The the the, the problems we're solving in businesses is to improve the way that they deliver. Uh, their operations. Uh, and today I'm particularly focusing on that sales aspect um, for, for the process. So when we talk about sales, quite often um, we come down to the, the obvious thing is, is CRM. And many businesses will say, okay, I need a CRM. And you will think of it in the context of a piece of software because there's thousands and thousands of, of software applications that claim to be, well, that purport to be CRM and, and they, they are. But CRM is a process, first and foremost, and it's a way of, of managing your relationships with your customers, customer relationship management. So let's just set the scene, if you like. What is CRM? Yeah, it's converting those prospects that you have into customers and then building loyalty, okay, and retaining them through personalized communication and that, that connection that you have and, and, and that service delivery. So many businesses uh, will, Think of CRM at that starting point of identifying, biz, uh, identifying potential customers and converting them into sales. But that's just the part of it. That's just the, the early part of CRM. It is the part that we're going to talk about today, um, but there is more to CRM than just sales. 
It is about the relationship you have with your customers for the life of that relationship, which is service delivery, okay? And it's managing and building and retaining those customers, which is that loyalty aspect. Um, so CRM is, is much bigger than just that sales aspect or a database of potential leads and customers. However, there is a process we go through um, and the context of CRM uh, in, in the overall sales funnel is, I'm just trying to put, put, it, put it into the pictures, sorry, put it into, a, into context. So many people and many people will be familiar with the concept of a sales funnel. So effectively, customers come in the top, okay, and they work their way down, sorry, in the top and they work their way down into, into a sale. So there is a bigger pool of, of audience at the top of the funnel, and they're narrowed down all the way through to converting them into a, into a sale. Um, and into a live customer. So the CRM process particularly moves these customers or potential customers through that funnel. And if you think of CR, you think of marketing and sales as two distinct functions within your business uh, or two, two distinct activities, the marketing side of your business is around building awareness amongst your customers or potential customers and your audience generating an interest for them. So that's about brand building and profile and messaging uh, and tone of voice. Those are the sorts of things that Peter and his team talk about all the time. So it's building that awareness, generating an interest through the communications. But then once there is an interest and it's triggered, then the sales aspect starts of that, of that funnel where you start to build that relationship. You, you make connection, you then uh, set put through, forward a proposal or start to engage with that customer in order to get a decision, whether that be a, you know a remote purchase or whether that be a personal sale. So all the way through to decision and action. And action is about converting that potential customer through to a through to an actual customer. So I'm not going to dwell on the sales funnel in any great detail, but I'm just putting it in the context of what CRM is about. If you think of CRM, the marketing side top and the sales side at the bottom. So what are the benefits okay, of CRM? What, why, why, why invest in this process and think about your CRM process and then potentially invest in software? Um, ultimately, it's about getting more bang for your buck. That's what it's about. You're, getting, you're working smarter, not harder. Uh, boiled it, boil it down to that. So some of the sort of top line things around CRM, uh, you get better efficiency in your marketing. You understand what marketing activities work in terms of how, what generate, what interest and awareness is generated and then what that conversion rate is uh, versus the ones and the activities that you don't. Okay, so that's really important. If you are trying to manage budgets, you don't want to just spend, um, you know, as a sort of scattergun effect and try and hope for the best you want to target your marketing spend accurately. And that's what a CRM it will record that information for you uh, and the process of recording that information as well. Um, it gives you, yeah, makes your communication with customers far, far more effective. Now, if you do not have some centralized process in a way of recording that information, that communication exchange with your customers, then that relationship is with an individual in your business. And that might be fine if you're a standalone, you know, if you're a one man band, but as you want to scale and grow, it needs to be something that is repeatable and scalable. And therefore you need somewhere centralized to have that communication exchange. So if someone's not around, um, if someone's on holiday, you're not relying on an individual and their relationship with that potential customer to move that customer along, whether that be a potential customer to convert them into a sale or to maintain that loyalty as well. Um, and also if that, if that person leaves, you know, that salesperson leaves, you do not want them taking the relationship away with them. You want the relationship to be with your business. Um, Data-driven decision-making. So again, it sort of relates to a lot of the things around the marketing, but by recording the information in a, in a centralized location, you can then make decisions based on that information, which are more, more effective for the business, whether that be marketing spend or where your, where your, uh, where your most profitable customers come from. Um, where your most challenging customers come from, uh, the cost that it takes you to acquire a customer, you need to understand that and then work out what you need to do in terms of help lower that cost uh, in order of acquiring a customer. Um, and that profitable sales cycle. So this is really, really important. A CRM or a process 
helps keep momentum up on a sale. Okay, so from that initial awareness through to inquiry, through to proposal or proposition, uh, through to action, the shorter that type takes in terms of time and resource, the more profitable the outcome will be. So if you can use CRM and the tools from a technology, technological point of view, but also the information that is recorded and centralized to move and keep momentum up, you will convert that sale much quicker. And by converting that sale much quicker, they will be a more profitable outcome for the, for, for the business. Um, it also improves your accuracy in forecasting. So you know effectively what your conversion rate is as a perfect example. So if you get 10 inquiries and you, and you win one in 10, okay, so there's a 10% conversion rate, you know that actually you need, and you've got a target, I don't know, of, of four sales per month, you need 40 inquiries. So that then suddenly looks at, you're looking at your marketing effort, you're looking at, um, have I got those inquiries in my pipeline in order to convert those or those leads in my pipeline in order to convert the sales that I'm targeting or you can expect to, to target. And that's not only great from a sales forecasting point of view, but also a production and delivery point of view. So operationally, if you are if you you're part of a team or or, or a a larger or uh, an, an organisation that then delivers on the on the sale, um, they need to know what's potentially coming down the line, so they can for they can organise themselves and, and and deliver that efficiently as well. So you're not selling something that you can't necessarily deliver. Um, also, finally, increased customer loyalty, building that relationship, having a better understanding, you're going to have a better relationship with your customers. They're going to be more loyal. Uh, as a result. So they're the benefits, yeah? And you've probably heard all those before and, you know, I'm going over old ground, but it's worth just reiterating those because when we start to now look at the process that we, we go about, so from a marketing point of view, the marketing process and the sales process, it's then something that can then be applied within a, within the context of CRM in the terms of your CRM uh, process within the business, but also any technology that you, you've adopted in, um, to help with that process. So let's look at marketing. Okay, CRM in terms of marketing. So marketing in this context is targeting prospects and implementing campaigns to encourage those prospects to engage. So that's the awareness generating an interest. Now I'm not going to go into the detail of how you go about that in terms of the, the different types of messaging and branding, the most effective that is where Peter is and his team are, are, are experts and all the resources that are available through Cub is, is you know, really, really valuable about the messaging and how you go about it. But more importantly, let's think about the process and let's think about actually, have you really given thought to how you go about directing your marketing spend in an effective way? So this is what we did in our business and this, this is relevant to our business, but it's relevant to all businesses. Um, we had a marketing plan, absolutely, and we implemented marketing activities across all sorts of different channels, uh, and we generated inquiries and generated customers from that. But actually, when we wanted to start to really boil down and, and really focus on what was the most effective and where we were going to get the biggest bang for our buck and therefore drive that sales process into the most efficient way, as into the most efficient machine possible, we had to look at different channels. Yeah, we had to look at sources of sale. So we asked ourselves, where does our work come from? You know, it's a very simple question. Where do we get our business from? And we were able to group our existing customers uh, from into different five different areas. And those different areas were the existing relationships. So relationships we have with existing customers, selling more to, to our existing customer base. Referrals. So other businesses referring or other customers referring them to uh, uh, their network into us. Digital marketing. So we did a lot of effort on digital marketing, but you know we didn't do we, have, we don't do a lot of, of, of offline marketing, so advertising thing, but other businesses as well. But digital marketing, so social media, uh, website development and optimization, that sort of thing, that generated some some customers or, and, and leads. Networking and events, so attending events getting our face out there, building those face-to-face -face contacts and that relationship with customers to explain what we do. And then the final one was outbound. So outbound was identifying someone you want to work with and contacting them, okay? Contacting them through via email, telephone, face-to-face, -face, that sort of thing. So 
that's where we were able to group our customer base, our existing customer base into those different groups. And we put that into a system. Yeah, we started to record against a category, against a section. Now, what that allowed us to do was to understand, first of all, where the where our customers were coming from, the majority of our customers were coming from, the value of those customers to our business in terms of profit, um, and therefore the the um, the effort that you know the, the the bit where we would get the biggest bang for our buck, and also the effort we would have to put in in order to convert a customer. So an inquiry, the conversion rate per per channel. So you know obvious things were existing relationships were extremely good in terms of conversion rate because we they already knew us they already liked us they already trusted us and therefore it was an easy way uh, and lo low cost way to generate more sales uh, through that customer base however they're, they're they're not a you know they're a finite size so you've only got a certain number of existing customers whereas your digital marketing activity you know you're marketing to and you're you're promoting yourself to an infinite number of customers via you know via online um, but the inquiries that come in are much much lower in terms of conversion rate because they don't know you they've got to do you know generated an interest but you know they, they have to build that relationship that rapport and understand what you do and the value that you offer over a potential competitor and give them an input um, an impetus to make a decision and therefore you need a lot more inquiries for the same number of customers so once we understood the conversion rates, the numbers, we then could allocate cost and allocate investment into those different channels. Now, it's all very well saying, OK, let's just throw some money at it. But you can't just throw money at something like that. So as part of this exercise that we identified and understood where our customers were coming from, the sources, we then put together a plan. OK, we, we put together a mini campaign plan per channel and we allocated resource for each channel because ultimately there's no magic bullet. If someone comes and sell, tries to sell you, oh, you know, you're going to get all your customers from LinkedIn. Yeah, you might do and good luck to you, but it's very, very unlikely. Uh, for many, many SMEs and for growing businesses, you need to have a multiple of activities across a multiple levels of channel, across multiple channels in order to bring in the level of inquiry that you want because things fluctuate, you know, things go up, things go down. Um, networking events, obviously during COVID fell off a cliff. Yeah. So if you didn't, if all, you generated all your, all your business from networking events and suddenly you didn't have that, that access to that market, you're exposed. Yeah. So this is really, really important to have that broad breadth of, of activity, but not just do everything because the, 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 the option, or sorry, the, the, the tendency for businesses is to try and do a bit of everything, you know, and spread themselves too thin. You've got that information now of where your customers come from, but your marketing activity needs to be targeted and focused. So I'm not going to go into the details of how to do a marketing plan or a campaign plan, because that's what Peter does, and, and you will know how to do a marketing plan. But instead of doing a marketing plan for your entire customer base, think about it in terms of that channel. OK, so what is the marketing activity you're going to do for your existing relationships? OK, and that is about what you want to try and get out of those relationships. Yeah, what your targets are, what the evidence is that they will buy more. OK, so you can look at, look at your evidence base, put together a list of actions. OK, and set them and assign those and then measure the impact. As simple as that. Do not spend ages on a month. You know, it's one page, it's one page of activity, but it's focused. And then you've tasked your sales team or yourself with actually doing focused activity across each of those channels. And then you can measure the impact. And then that goes back into the system so you can keep recording the recording the, uh, the impact and the results. And then you can change it as it goes. So obviously for us, we focused a lot on existing relationships first. Low hanging fruit, go for those. But they run out. Yeah, they run out. So we then looked at other activities. We, you know, that's digital marketing for us was more of a drip feed, a slow burn, just building awareness. So it's something re relatively consistent and active. So you've got to be visible. Whereas, you know, networking and events, we were really starting to think, actually, what are we getting out of some of these networking activities? And it was just turning up. What there was, there was, 
a lot of resource that was going in in terms of time, but we weren't getting a lot of results. So we narrowed the events that we went to and the activities that and, and the, uh, the networking that we did to get a better impact. And we were able to do that because we had a focused campaign plan. So I know I'm speaking very quick, but hopefully you're getting, you're picking up this as we go. Um, but that's the marketing side of things. So from a CRM or a process point of view, very, very simple. Identify where your work, your existing work is coming from, measure that and record what's working, what's not, and then put a plan in place in order to get more of the good stuff and cut out the stuff that isn't working for you. Let's move on to sales. Okay, so sales is once you've got that interest inquiry, it's converting that new business lead into a sale. Okay, and that's where we're, that's really what we're focusing on today is to how do you move them through that sales funnel in a way that is profitable uh, and a way that allows you to make it a repeatable and scalable process. You do not want a hero salesperson to come in and say, oh, I can get, I can sell anything. You want a process that you can slot in multiple salespeople who follow a process and follow it consistently. And therefore, you're able to then say, well, okay, if I bring another one in, I'm going to make this much more money. And that's what you want, rather than trying to find these uh, unicorns out there that will, that will sell anything for you. Uh, and that might be you as well. So you want to, if, you're a, if you're the sales um, arm of your business, you want to try and bring in a process so you don't have to be the only one selling on, on, uh, on behalf of the business. So the first thing to do is understand and a lot of businesses don't do this, is, is qualifying those inquiries that come in. Because you, you know, I'm an optimist. I'm a natural sales person. I used to think an inquiry meant sale. You know, they're interested. Oh, great, count that as a sale. But actually what I've learned over the, the, the last few years is actually that inquiry for that, you know, are they a genuine inquiry? And more often than not, they're not, particularly if they come from a particular channel um, where they don't necessarily know you. So what has really, really helped me has been a qualification criteria, ticking off that inquiry against a criteria. Now, there are loads of different criteria that you can choose from. Go on to HubSpot and, and, and type in uh, qualification criteria. There's hundreds of them. Um, but these are the ones that are, rel they're all similar, but they give you a way of qualifying them. And most importantly, and any sales uh, coach will tell you this, is you're as, is as valuable qualifying them out of your sales funnel than it is just as is qualifying them in because you're not wasting time and effort on business, on, on inquiries that just aren't going to go anywhere. So the one that we use is bands. Yeah. Do they have the budget? Do they have the authority? Do they have the need? And do they have a timeline? Okay. Do they have a, a decision time? And that is what you've got to get to very, very quickly in the exchange with that customer. If they, if they are interested and there's a budget, but they don't have any authority, they're not going to make the decision, then you've got to make a decision as to, can I get to the authority maker through this person? Can they influence them uh, or the, to the decision maker? Or, you know, this is going nowhere and, and move them on. But if they are, tick the budget, authority, need and timeline, they are your, they are your focus. They're the ones that they, they've got money to spend, they can make the decision, you know that they need the system and they know and you know when they want to have it by or the system we start talking in my context. They know they need the the product that you're selling and they have a timeline. That is where you focus your energy. So when that customer or that lead comes in and you qualify them, then you decide whether you qualify them out. Okay, so there's no budget. Okay, they're out. Or do you keep them in, but they're not they're not a live lead effectively? There's something for the future, or um, or they are genuine and you move them on so you prioritize them in that way so the first thing you do when you get a lead in is qualifying it before you move them along now i know i'm throwing all this around but we'll come to a process i'll show you a flow a flow diagram in a minute that shows how we go in these steps but take if you take one thing away take this away uh, from this session is that qualify your inquiries before you start investing time and energy on them okay then once you've got that qualification, you need to define a process that 
everyone can follow. So it's not reliant on an individual or you're not asking others, individuals, to do different, do it their way. You want a way that the business does it. So one, you record information consistently. Your communications are consistent with your, with your customers. And also you're directing your resource in the most effective and efficient way possible because they're following the steps and then you're getting rid of them as you go. So, um, you know, I'm going to show you how to do a pro. I'm going to show you a process map for our sales process that I'm going to share. But if you want to draw a process map or build one for your sales process, there's some resources that you can go to on our website. But effectively, you list all the steps involved in your sales process. Okay, and that is from initial inquiry. Don't worry about the marketing process. Okay, the marketing has been dealt with in that, in that sort of tactical plan that we talked about uh, against those channels. But once the inquiry comes in, what are the steps involved in, in order to move them in and convert them as a customer? Then once those steps, you've got them, you organize them in a sequential order. Okay, and then you also identify a decision. Now, a decision is a yes, no. Are they qualified? Yes, move to the next step. Are they qualified? No. Do we move, then we do something else, okay? And I'll show you what that means in terms of in terms of visually, but also understanding the flow. Draw a process map, which I'll show you, and then you share it with your business, okay? It's all very well, you coming up with it, but you're not necessarily the person who's going to be following that process. You want everyone in that business or in that function to follow that process and to be consistent with it. Um, and when things don't go right, okay, and they often don't go right, let's face it, that's business, isn't it? Um, you need something to return back to to say, did you follow the process? And more often than not, they didn't follow the process and therefore something went wrong. But if they did follow the process and something still went wrong, then you look at your process, of course. So let's look at our process map. Now it's in two parts, so I will go through it. Uh, I do hope, I think it's visible. I hope it's, I hope it's all right, big enough. Um, yeah. Is it okay, Peter? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, we do have to look at the screen, but uh, you've got a lot of detail, which I think is important. Yeah, I think I think that's right, and and I'm more than happy to share this. I think we've got a copy of it on our website as well, but I can I can provide it to to Peter as well. But this is a typical flow diagram for a sales process. So let me walk you through it. So the new inquiry comes in, so that signifies the start of the process. So first of all. Are they a new customer? Do you have you ever do you have record of this of this customer before? And if you haven't, okay, if they are a new customer, then you need to establish if they're a viable customer or not. Okay, so that might be a credit check if if you're if you're looking for a, you know for a larger customer, or it might be that you know location, geography, that sort of thing. You've not qualified them for their inquiry. You've just understood whether they're viable or not. Um, and that sort of top level stuff. So yeah, let's say research they're viable. If they are not viable for your business, okay, do you need, to, do you want to refer them out? So refer them out is refer them on to someone else because you've got that information, you've put in that effort. If you want to revert, refer them on to another, to a partner organization or a relationship you have with someone, you might generate value from that relationship, even though you've not done anything. So let's say you do want to refer them on, okay? You work out who the best referral partner is, you, you share that on, and then you make a note of that in your, in your CRM. In, in, you make a record of that somewhere. And I'm talking in context of a system, but it could be a spreadsheet or anything like that. But uh, you want to know what the journey is for that customer. Okay, that, that, so when they come back again, you know that actually we did deal with, we did look at you, you weren't right for us, but we put you on in touch with someone else, okay? If you don't think they're viable and you don't want to refer them, it ends there, okay? So, oh, sorry. So if they are viable, okay, you add the customer details, you record all the customer information um, to a CRM. So you can have a, a CRM system, or you can have a spreadsheet, or you can have paper, you know, but to be efficient, put them in a system, put them in a database, um, because that's a, a record and a history of it. So you add your customer details, so it's customer, who that who the contacts, who the individual contacts are against that, against that organization, if you're business to business, if not, who the individual is, where their inquiry came from, or where that customer inquiry came from. So remember, we're talking about those channels, those source. So where was it? Was it an existing relationship, you know? digital marketing, uh, industry, any other categories that you want to use for when you want to dissect that data in a, in a, at a future date. 
So you've got that record, okay? That is if they're new. If they're not new, you've already got a record. They're in the system, okay? And you want to keep that record because they're an object. Customer is an object in your business, and that object has things hanging off of it. And things hanging off of it are inquiries that they've made, the jobs that they've done, the contacts that they've had, etc. So we move on to the inquiry. So an inquiry comes in, you've now got a customer record, you now record the inquiry against that customer. So the inquiry is what they're looking for uh, and what they're interested in, and then you set that status as a lead or an inquiry. So they're not a customer yet, but they're a potential customer, so they're a lead. So then it's that qualification stage. Now that might be that you do that there and then, or you might pass that inquiry on to someone to do that qualification, to the salesperson, to the account manager, or, or whatever that is. But that's where you do the qualification. And that's the most important bit. See how early it is in the process. It's once you've got the inquiry, then we qualify. So have they been qualified? Can we just have a quick look? Say no. Okay, one of those qualification criteria hasn't been met. That's what we do. Okay, if we qualify it and they still haven't been met, we say, we then ask the question, is there any future potential with this customer and this inquiry? Uh, bearing in mind, you know, we've already done the viability check. We're now saying, actually, now, you know, they're just tire kicking. And we look back at them and we've had 15 inquiries from these people and every single time they've not gone ahead or, or whatever it is. So if we don't think they've got future potential, do we want to refer them on? Yeah, again, extract value and it moves up into that process. If we do think they've got uh, future potential, we get the permission, yeah, uh, to contact them and we add them to our marketing database. So we've not lost them, we've not wasted them, and if they're not been on our marketing database before, they're on it, okay? And then there's a separate process which we've talked about, about implementing your marketing activity. To one, hopefully, get them to generate interest and move them back to the top of that that funnel, sorry, back to the top of that, that workflow and that, that state. So that is that marketing process side of things. And then schedule a direct follow-up. So that might be a reminder in the diary or in your, in your database to say, in three months time, let's see if they're, they're okay, you know, if, if they're interested. So let's say they are being, they have been qualified, okay? So the minute they've been qualified, they're now moved from, you know, a lead, a typical lead to an opportunity. Okay, these are genuine uh, opportunities to do, to do business with you and soon. Okay, so you then start to build out your job. Okay, so what you're gonna deliver for that, for that customer. Now, every business is different. And if you're a service-based business, you might do proposals, or if you're a product business, you might just send them a price list or whatever it is. But, but um, you break down that job, okay? And then you send that customer a quote or a proposal with your terms and conditions, out it goes, okay? And you can automate all of that within a CRM. So that streamlines the process and makes it consistent or you can do it manually, okay? And you schedule a follow-up call, okay? To say, right, we've qualified you. Here is what we're offering, okay? Can we do business? And this is where you try and push for that decision. So have they agreed? So you make that call to get that decision and that can go back and forth for quite a while. But let's say, yeah, it's, it has it been agreed, okay? If it hasn't been agreed, what happens next? Okay, so not yet. Do they need more time? Okay, no, they don't need more time. They're ready to make a decision. Do they want us to adjust the proposal? So still interested, but not quite. Well, then I'll update the quote and resend and it goes into a loop, okay? If we don't want to update the proposal and they don't want more time, then they go back up into this, is that, have they got any future potential? and then you go through that other pro that process again. If they do need more time, you schedule the follow-up, okay? And then it's the live, it's a loop to say, are they still interested? So it's all very well, you qualify them, but quite often they're just giving you, you know, lip service potentially, but has it been agreed? If it's not, is it still live? If it's not, then you change the, you know, it to lost and record the reason, always record the reasons why they haven't gone ahead. Okay, whether that's decision for you or a decision by them, record that because that will help in the way that you position the, the business or position the product in the future, but also to understand where your potential weaknesses might lie. And then have they got future potential? Again, it's the same process there. 
Okay, so let's say they have agreed. Finally, you've got agreement over the line. Okay, so that is a consistent process. It does take time and you wanna measure how long that takes for each customer in order to understand how they've moved through that funnel. Then you collect the signature or a purchase order and confirm that to say a sale and you change that status to live in your system. So they've gone from inquiry to opportunity or lead opportunity to, to live. Uh, that is the job, not necessarily the customer, it's the job and the, and the job hangs off the customer. You might then notify finance, set up invoicing or set up payment, and there's a separate process there. You will then hand over that relationship to whomever is responsible for delivering the product or service that you are. It might be yourself, or you might need to do the hand up, but there's a separate process about delivering it, and you want another process to make sure it's delivered consistently. And then you might then also want to say to the customer, how did you find that sales process? Was it easy to understand? What, what did you feel pressured? Where we would value for money? Those sorts of things. Again, collect that information and put it back into your system. So you've got that. You've got that uh, data set that you can make those decision decisions in the future about how you go about the sales process. So that, in a nutshell, is a it's a pretty simple and straightforward sales process. But if everyone follows that in a consistent way and you're using documentation that is consistent, you are going to make that far more efficient. Uh, sales function in your business than if you didn't have that. Uh, than if you're relying on someone getting up in the morning, your salesperson going, oh, what am I going to do today? You know, I'm going to ring a few people. Do no, this is what you're doing today because you're following that process. So sales, okay? If you are looking to implement technology to support the sales process, so if you are sourcing a CRM, Okay, you want to choose the right technology to manage that process. Always start with process. So align your align the technology with your process. Don't go, oh, I need a CRM, and then manipulate your process to match the CRM. Define your process first, then choose a piece of software or technology that will support that. Make sure the technology you choose is flexible and adaptable because your process will change inevitably as your business and your customers change. Therefore, you need to be able to have that flexibility within it. Make sure the data, where your data is, is it secure? What are the backup procedures of that data? If you stop using that software, where does your data go? Do you have access to that? That's really important. Can that piece of software or technology integrate with others? Uh, that's really important as well, because if you're then doing product management uh, or delivery, you might want to have a project management system or invoicing, you might want to link to your finance packages and so say zero QuickBooks and you don't want duplicates of the, of the same data. You want them all to connect to, to each other. Understand what the total cost of ownership is. It's all very well saying it's 10 quid a month, but it's 10 quid a month if you have only 10 customers in the CRM and you only have one user. Understand how you're gonna use it, who's using it, and what the potential implications are if you start to grow as a business. Um, and if you want other modules against it, so if you do want integration, so if you do want other aspects of the, of the software, that 10 pounds per month suddenly, suddenly increases significantly. So understand that. Do they provide or does, this, does the provider offer after sales support? Because technology is complex and you do always need to understand, you know, you need support there. Do they have a development roadmap? Because as your business develops, you need the technology to develop with you. Do they have ideas and a plan to add to the technology or is it gonna stay in one place and be you know, a legacy piece of software very, very quickly? And first, the big, big takeaway, start simple. Don't buy something with all the bells and whistles because if you haven't got something already and you're trying to adopt something really complex, one, it's incredibly hard to get started because you, you lose that complexity, you, sorry, you lose that impetus because it's not easy to, to manage and it's very hard to onboard, onboard your colleagues and your staff because they will go, this is too hard, I'm just going back to what I've always done. So you want to start simple and build on it from there. So how you go about it from now, your sales process. Uh, so implementation. So. Peter talks about this all the time, so I'm not going to dwell on this uh, for very long, but set some objectives because it's all very well saying you're going to do this, but it's not the day job, okay? It's, it's actually working on the business and you have to allocate time in order to make, uh, make progress on this. So set your 30-day objectives. What am I going to get done in terms of managing my sales process in the next 30 days? And that might just be getting a consistent 
proposal or implementing the qualification criteria. Whatever that is, set those very, very simple, but very focused activities in order to move yourself towards refining a sales process. Then record those. What are those? Are you backlog them? So you put them in the to-do list, okay? What are we gonna do in order to, in these 30 days? And this is, this is agile. This is where we've come from, but it's an agile approach, but it does really help focus your, your efforts. Backlog, right, what do I need to do in order to meet these objectives, okay? So story them up, put them into individual tasks. So if you are gonna implement the, the, um, the qualification criteria, one of the tasks will be to choose one. Another task will be to educate your staff. Another one will be to put in systems in order to qualify them and record it. Those are the things that you need to backlog and, and record. And then instead of saying, these are all the things we're gonna do in 30 days, you yeah, split it in half. What are we gonna get done in two weeks first? Okay, and work to those. So you take all of your backlog stories, okay, here, and you move the ones that you're gonna get done in the first two weeks, here to doing. And as you're doing them, you move them across to done. So this is what's the classic Kanban board. To do, doing, done, okay? So all your tasks here for the 30 days, you move move the ones that you're gonna get done in that two week period to here and you move them across to done. And that then helps you achieve this implementation of the process that we're talking about. And then use, yeah, after those two weeks, those first two weeks, you might need to re rejuggle things but at least you haven't wasted those full 30 days and go, I've not achieved anything. You've stopped halfway through and recalibrated. And use your time effectively. We're business owners, we're busy. Yeah, we've got loads of distractions. We've got loads of things going on. Yes, we need to improve the sales process, but you know our businesses don't stop while we do that. We've still got to generate income. We've still got to process what we've done or you know, process the jobs that we've, we've already won. So the final thing I want to, to, you, to share with you, which has really helped myself and everyone in our business is the Eisenhower matrix. It's a really, really simple thing because when you've got loads of things flying at you, okay, and we've got this beautiful Kanban board go, but that's just for one project. Yeah? You've got loads of other things going on. There is a really easy thing that we use, which is this. So when, when something comes in, comes through the door to do, so a task, okay, you've got to remind yourself, is it urgent and is it important? Okay, if it is urgent and important, you do it. You do it, you drop everything, you do it now, okay? If it is um, urgent but not important, okay, so can you, who can do it for you? So you, you outsource it, you delegate it, okay? And that is really valuable um, because quite often, urgent always trumps important. Oh, urgent, I've got to get it done. You drop everything and therefore all the important stuff gets pushed to the bottom. So really ask yourself, if it's urgent but not important, offload it to someone else, okay? If it's important but not urgent, you schedule your time. And that is where you do this, okay? You do your planning, you do your, your Kanban board and you say, right, I'm gonna allocate a certain amount of time to do this because it's important, but it's not urgent, yeah? So you can, you can move and schedule time around it. And the other one, if it's not important and not urgent, don't do it. People like being busy, okay? They feel they're productive by being busy. That is not the answer um, because being busy doing doing something that doesn't is not important and not urgent is actually costing the business lots of money and it's a complete waste of your, of your resource so again put this on everyone's desk that make decisions and, and have day-to-day -day tasks and they ask themselves when something comes in is it important or, and is it urgent and it's so easy and simple to implement that actually you then start to see even if you don't do any of the things i've just described just using that in your day-to-day -day operations really starts to crystallize who's doing the most effect, who's doing the, their work the most effectively, who's working smarter, not harder. So I know we've only got a little bit of time left. So this is my final slide. Um, and that is some resources. Okay, so how to create a simple process map. We've got a resource there. Uh, what is CRM and how to choose the right one for your business? It's a, it's a blog there. Uh, and then again, how we increased sales leads by 25% in 90 days. Uh, again, it's a reiteration of what I've just described. And then finally, 
the piece of software I used to build that or to, to, to create that flow diagram is called Create. It's on Creately. So Creately is an online tool. Uh, it's free if you've only got a few process maps to build. Um, and then it's like 15 or five quid a month or something like that. So it's, it's really powerful and, and really valuable. So a lot of people ask me about that. So that, that's one I would recommend. And that concludes my presentation. So uh, great. I wonder if there are any questions or any feedback. Yeah, uh, Michael, thank you very much for such a useful webinar. It's, it, <clears throat> although we do this stuff you know, a lot ourselves, it's a brilliant reminder and beautifully put together. And, um, and just to remind everybody, the slides and the recording will be available later on the website uh, on Thursday. Um, Teresa's got a fantastic question for you, uh, Michael. <laughs> You'll okay. love this one. Uh, in a high value B2C environment, presumably selling yachts or selling high value cars or yes. things like that, how might we identify a viable lead? How might we identify a viable lead? Well, it does come back to qualification because that qualification criteria is relevant, even irrespective of what of what you're selling, because if they do qualify, I mean, it, it is simple. There are other qualification criteria, and, and I would recommend you go and do some research, Teresa, on, on the different ones. But if if you know, high, say selling yachts as a perfect example, if there's no budget, they have no money. Yeah, then that's an immediate disqualification of they're you know they're they're interested in them great okay but you could be investing a lot of time and energy and they're not going to be able to afford it no matter how much you know how how convincing your sales process and your and your proposition is there is not that going to be that affordability so it is very very important to use a criteria that works okay um but also stick stick to it so understanding when a lead comes in is yeah start with qualification um and you know it, it might not be that one of those but set your own you know if, if if that if that's relevant for you but yeah starting with that qualification criteria is just um it's just something is, is is we would recommend that for any for any business yeah we've got a funny story uh <clears throat> related to that so i i, I love selling yachts and uh, when the boat show pre-covid was around and you've got all the, you know, the princess and oyster yachts there. Um, uh, it was funny how the princess stand, which, you know, the you know, quarter of a million pound upwards boats, um, they let anybody on. But to get onto the oyster stand, you had to actually sort of um, uh, almost play that, place the, the qualifying game and say, yeah, we're business owners and, you know, we've, we've, we're looking for our next, next purchase. And uh, so that's what we have to actually blog our way onto the oyster yeah. stand to get past. To, to sort of get past oh, oh, you're one of those time wasters then, Peter. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, inter interestingly, uh, the, the letter's on and, you know, we, we had a walk around and so forth, mm -hmm. but we weren't approached because we didn't look like we had money. Um, yeah. But we weren't we weren't time wasters either, you know, sort of, we were time wasters from their perspective, but we didn't. Yeah. You know, we weren't uh, everybody. We weren't pushing prams and stuff around, which, which all the was happened with the princess yachts. I mean, anybody with money wouldn't be going to near that. Those, yeah. days. it was fascinating. Well, there's certain watches, isn't there? These, these, you know, they'll interview you to, to see whether you qualify to buy one of their products, uh, and so they sort of self filter that out by saying, you know, you've got to come for an interview before we're even going to allow you to to put it in, you know. For, for us to, to even consider selling it to you. So that's sort of reversing the reversing the psychology that way. But yeah, positioning yourself in the in the right places where where those um, target audience, you know, you'll obviously talk about that feature as well, but but um, uh, you know, making sure you're in the right place and you've got the right messages is obviously very important because those inquiries tend to be more qualified from from, um, from their very absolutely own. absolutely there's um a story i can't remember all the details now but it was when they used to hire cruise ships and they put all the buyers on the ship and they put all the salespeople on the ship and you know and and there'd be sort of you know, sort of uh, conversations and um one an observer watched this sales guy going around the ship and said well you've you seem to be talking to a lot of people but not spending a lot of time with them he said yeah well i'm spending my time qualifying them out you know, and, and I think when when you're in a network, people people don't do that. They don't qualify no. people out. And like you said, they 
they um you know they think every inquiry is a sale but it, it isn't and uh, so they make the mistake of being busy and thinking they're being productive unfortunately yeah i know exactly mm -hmm. uh, so teresa did, did that answer your question uh, you can answer answers answer through chat or uh, switch your mic on that definitely helps. Thanks very much. Um, and yes, it is about trying to identify the budget, but it, it, it can be a quite a challenging thing. Yeah, it's how you how you go about it, isn't it? Uh, yes. And for different customers, it's a different a different approach. I mean, we always because there's such a varied um, price range for CRM systems. I always say to them what our charges are, what our basic charges are, and that very early doors goes. Okay, that's that's within our budget or or not, and then and then you can waste you can waste a lot of time putting forward the proposition if you haven't asked that question at the outset so we didn't used to but we do now for yeah. that for that very reason mm. okay. uh, does so uh, we're coming up to 12 o'clock has anybody else got any questions no okay well uh, thank you very much michael uh, that was uh, very illuminating thank you very much for uh, everyone mm. attending the um uh, the webinar today. I hope you do f have found it uh, useful. Um, uh, so in two weeks time now we'll be presenting how to develop a value proposition uh, for the business and we're looking at the process for developing that. Um, so um, again we're, we're big fans of Creately. We do all our, our, our marketing uh, recipes which we'll be talking about uh, in, in a future um, uh, presentation um, and they're all process based because if you follow a process you, you can fine tune it you can measure how you're doing and so forth and uh, and that's where the technology comes in with uh, that Michael was talking about and uh, if you um, do get chance you know and do want to find out more please uh, give Michael a call or re drop him an email at hello at blueren.co.uk uh, so uh, we'll be sending out the uh, mail shots and the links to the uh, next one it's on events on the vision to success website and uh, i look forward to to seeing you in a couple of weeks time so thank you michael and thank you everybody for attending thank you thank you cheers guys Bye.